HER2 metastatic breast cancer remains incurable, and um, you know we have limited treatment options in a third line setting. No single regimen is really considered the standard of care, although there are several different regimens recommended by the National Cancer Guidelines. Um, up to half of half of these patients will develop brain metastases, and for this patient population in particular, there's really um, limited treatment options that we know cross the blood-brain barrier. Uh, so tocatinib is a drug, it's an investigational drug um, that's administered orally, and it's highly selective for HER2 with minimal inhibition of EGFR. And this um, lends itself well for a potentially favorable toxicity profile um, without compromising efficacy. So in a prior study, in a, in, the phase, in a phase 1b study, we saw that tocatinib, when added to trastuzumab and capecitabine, showed encouraging anti-tumor activity and showed that it was a safe combination in patients who were heavily pretreated, including those with brain metastases. So this sort of um, set the background for the HER2 CLIMB study, which evaluated in a randomized fashion whether the addition of tocatinib or placebo um, to trastuzumab and capecitabine um, would be effective in patients who were heavily pretreated, including those with brain metastases. Sure, so um, patients were eligible for this trial if they had metastatic disease and if they had centrally confirmed HER2 positivity. They were also required to have had treatment with trastuzumab, pertuzumab, and TDM1. Uh, a brain MRI was required in all patients at study entry. Um, patients who had a history of brain metastases that was stable were allowed to enroll as most clinical trials. But unique to this trial, patients were also allowed to enroll if they had either untreated or previously treated progressing lesions in the brain. Eligible patients were then randomized in a two-to-one fashion to tocatinib or placebo in combination with trastuzumab and capecitabine. There were several pre-specified stratification factors, including the absence or presence of brain metastases, ECOG performance status, as well as region of the world. So the results showed that um, there was uh, th that tocatinib, when added to trastuzumab and capecitabine, reduced the risk of death in patients with and without brain metastases by a third, and reduced the risk of uh, progression or death by half in all of the patients, including those with brain metastases. Notably, there was also a du near doubling in the confirmed objective response rate um, seen as well. Further, um, it confirmed that this triplet regimen was safe um, and well tolerated and that there, were, there weren't many drug discontinuations due to adverse events, which really tells us that it allows for prolonged treatment of patients in the clinical setting. So there were um, some tox some uh, uh, adverse events noted. They were all mostly low grade, and the most common ones were diarrhea, um, hand foot syndrome, nausea, vomiting, and fatigue. So you know, in patients who have had who are heavily pretreated. This represents a potential new standard of care treatment, and so I think these results are really um, practice changing and are going to impact how we treat patients in the clinic um, once the regimen is approved. Okay, so that's a great question. So um, patients with HER2-positive metastatic breast cancer who develop brain metastases are generally offered local treatments, such as surgery, uh, focal radiation with either um, stereotactic radiosurgery or gamma knife, or in, as, as indicated, whole brain radiation as well. Um, and usually the systemic treatment that, they're, that they were previously on is continued in the cases where there's no systemic progression. In cases where systemic progression is identified at the time of progression in the CNS, um, generally the systemic treatment is also changed.
So uh, no, actually, you know, patients with brain metastases have typically been excluded from clinical trials. So that's what makes um, the HER2 CLIMB study quite unique in that um, it's really a model for hopefully future trials that we're going to see that's going to allow um, patients, that hopefully will allow patients with and without brain metastases, including those who have, have active disease that has previously been untreated or progressing after prior treatment. So I think uh, I think the the main uh, takeaway from this is that um, you know this represents a major advance for patients with HER2 positive metastatic breast cancer towards improving their outcomes. Um, really, we have not seen a overall survival benefit in a randomized trial setting to date in patients who have received almost all of the contemporary anti-HER2 targeted therapies that we have, trastuzumab, pertuzumab, and TDM1. So I'm really excited that, you know, we have this new potential treatment option for patients. Mm -hmm.